Yes, welcome to Cork in the North episode, with, uh, I think it's 13 or 4, 12 or 13, I'm not really too sure. Thanks to everyone that's downloaded so far, really good. This week I am joined by the most sexiest man in the Irish, Northern Irish comedy scene or Irish comedy scene, depending on which. We need to talk about that as well, it's Aaron. Yeah. <sighs> Aaron Butler. Thanks very much, Andrew. Just flexing it out yeah, there. So well. That jumper very, near it. Very, very jumper near it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, just I couldn't believe my You strength. don't normally see so many good looking comics. You know that, Aaron? You, you're up there like. I appreciate that, Andrew. You're a good looking yeah. guy too. I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Especially, <laughs> congrats. Happy birthday today as well. My birthday so, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat, Young, young, young today. You're not on the Botox or anything, are you? No, no, no. no. It's just no stress, Aaron. Do you moisturize? I do moisturize. Yes, um, me too. I moisturize. I look after my teeth pretty well. That is good teeth, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I also watch what I eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't watch what I drink. Fanta Lemon. We're not, we're not sponsored. That's Fanta Lemon. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into this. But um, it's nice to meet you. I've only met you a couple of times. And I've seen you gig, man. Funny guy. I, and that's 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 all you have to be but as a comedian. Thanks very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. I try my best, you know. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But, yeah, uh, but that's comedy. It, it is but what it is. Do you get a lot of, like... Uh, <laughs> What whistles? Like you get, you must get a lot of attention off the ladies or men, and depending fellas, on what you're into. Aaron. And fellas, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever you're into. I am into. People do question my sexuality a little bit because because I, I like I do musicals and stuff too sometimes. So when you do that, I think they immediately think, oh, dancer probably likes you know some fellas. And I have nothing against liking fellas, but I don't like fellas. Do I, I'm I'm women only. I imagine fellas like you though. Oh yeah, they they get hit me in the D. I've got some DMs from fellas yeah. like that. Oh yeah, 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 and like drag queens as well seems to be a big one here. Some local drag queens here like to message me quite frequently. It's a bit flattering though, isn't it? It's nice. I mean, I, I smile at it, and then but then there's also a little part of me that goes, "Let's not make this go too far." You know what I mean? Do I you reply. Ah, uh, oh, no. I I would use, sometimes I would do that. You know where someone replies your story and you just like it. Thumbs just up just something. so you can yeah just so you acknowledge it but then there's other times where they almost leave you an option not to reply where it's like they'll send this big long winded message being like your comedy and your blah 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 and I think you're so, and you have to you, you almost feel bad not replying but like I gotta say at least like thank you or something like that so sometimes I'll just do that and then I've had some gay guys being like have you got only fans and stuff like that and I'm like only fan so here's you're selling a- pictures of your elbows and stuff like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Strict, like yeah 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 strictly like 10 quid yeah yeah, yeah. the um but I, I always think if the comedy ever goes bad or if, like, I ever fall on hard times, it's a plan. It's a plan yeah. E. I don't know plan how many e. plans I've got, but I would imagine a it's pretty... A gay icon. It's low down. It's low down. <laughs> I can just see yeah, yeah, yeah. a gay icon dressed up in the DUP Orange Order poster <laughs> just covered in oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, strictly women, and uh, I appreciate all, all the women that say nice things about me too. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm a heterosexual male, and uh, I, <laughs> I just, just putting that out. What just, a what a what a lady! I never I said yeah. this. I never thought I'd have to say. I feel like we're at a, some sort of AA meeting. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm a heterosexual I went male. To, uh, Mar- I went to a Mardi Gras. Did you hmm. go to a Mardi Gras? Uh, that's in New Orleans. Yeah, uh, or no, can it be no, anywhere? No, everywhere. Yeah, I went oh, to right. a, 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 the Gay Pride in Manchester once for a weekend. Is that not just Gay Pride? Oh, Gay Pride. I can't remember. It was a long time no. ago. So Mardi Gras, just because I want the... I want. Is there a difference? There is. Oh, Ma- sorry. Okay. Mardi Gras, because a big difference, by the way, especially from Gay Pride. Gay Pride is like Gay Pride, uh, whatever, you know, all, all the Manchester has one, Belfast has one, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mardi Gras is New Orleans only, I believe, oh, in, right. in, the, in the United States. And what happens there is you buy a bunch of beads. This is true, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure you... I can't believe you haven't heard of this. You buy a bunch of beads... You throw them at women on the streets and then they flash their tits at you. Fa- and Sean, do you know about that? Sean knows about it. Sean, the producer, knows about it. Sean, producer, I never knows knew about, about that. Yes, I swear to God, look it up. I'm not, I know it sounds like something I would make up or something Paddy McDonald would tell you at a gig, but <laughs> it is. <laughs> Paddy will hate that I've mentioned him, by the way. I know he does. But I like, that is my running joke now because I know he's keeping track of all the times I mention him on podcasts. Because so now I, I want to see what ones he's going to miss. Next time you see Paddy, you're like, Six times last week. <laughs> yeah. We need to talk. No, no, no. Do you fucking said me on the podcast last week, you fucking <laughs> cunt? Be something um, like that. But I went to a gay pride in Manchester years mm. ago. And I tell you something, great fun. Oh, the, the, there's so much fun. Uh, there, so You know Belfast has one and stuff, don't you? Do they? Oh, and it's like... Massive. Big, 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 big. I think it happens in August, I believe, someday in August. And there's a big parade and there's floats with drag queens on them. Really? And it's a whole street party. The city centre is like, you can't get in there because it's just like gay, 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 gay. Well, I, I went to Pride a weekend in Manchester once and um, went the most non-threatening environment for alcohol I've ever been in. 
Like there was no tro- there was no aggression, you know that oh, yeah, toxic yeah. man. Oh yeah. The most fun no. and also like if you're a straight man also but a lot of straight women go there as well. Oh yes. And like they think automatically because you're there and you're gay or whatever, like but Oh yeah. I, I swear to God, I highly recommend it. It's so much fun as well. I met so many cool people, really interesting characters, people dressed up and all that. And great music. Yeah, and I think the, the, the gay community, to their credit, are probably the most welcoming, friendly community oh, of you know what I mean, and it goes the same for here as well you've been to Manchester and stuff like that and like yeah, you're saying about going to gay, gay places because that's where straight women are I used to think like that and I used to be like when I was younger we have the, the gay bar here the Kremlin which there's a poster on yeah, the wall Kremlin, here okay, for yeah, which yeah. Is, I've never been to the Kremlin I must go in yeah I mean you can, I mean, turning 40 I think this is your time okay Aaron <laughs> I think this is your time you weren't going to mention the age <laughs> oh sorry turning 32 30, 30, is, 30, is 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 30-ish yeah, yeah you can beep that in post there's a problem too, with my birth cert. I think it's been it was doctored by a few years yeah, so. yeah 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 I mean you can't trust those down south birth certs the, uh, the god knows what they well, are well they're the legitimate Irish ones uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry Aaron so angry I wish no. I had that but what's the um, Kremlin like uh, I mean, yeah it's a, it's a cool club <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying it's a cool club but it's like it's quite big actually because they have like I think it's three floors so it's like quite a big place and then they have they basically I used to go there and think when I was younger I was like oh you know this is bound to be an untapped market because straight guards go here with their gay friends I'll go here and they'll be like there's a straight guy blah, blah. but really what happens is I go there and they just assume I'm another gay fella and they just and then that's all it is really you know what I mean so then and then what happens is is that the fellas start flirting with me and I have to go fuck's sake and I've just got to get out of here now I've, I've completely landed myself in it but behind the Kremlin is like a complex where behind it it's like this fucking huge it's like probably like a building like this actually yeah. And it's just huge and connected to it. There is a place called the Shoe Factory, which is like a little sort of cabaret style bar. And there's also Union Street, which is like a karaoke style bar. Really cool stuff. But, but there was as well connected to it the Pipeworks, which. What are the Pipeworks? Was a sauna that was open 24 hours oh, connected. So what would happen is fellas would come up from. Uh, from like all over Northern Ireland, because obviously Northern Ireland, it, it is big, but it's also small too. So say you live in a, a rural place like South Derry or, you know, Enniskillen, whatever it is, there's not more much gay activity, activity happening there. So you got to come to Belfast to get it on in the hub. And they, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the hub is a euphemism, by the way, for <laughs> something else. But they, they would, so what would happen is fellas would come up, realize that, you know, the train leaves at like 11, last train, but the Kremlin doesn't close till 2, and maybe you're on the pool. So they would just check into the gay sauna and just stay there the whole night until their their train or bus the whole time. Now, it's since closed down, um, but there was reports of, like, people catching very, very fatal diseases Jesus. in it, let's say. Uh, and, yeah, it was just... And here's here's an interesting fact for you as well about the Pipeworks. Why am I talking so much about gay community? Um, maybe I'm gay, I don't know. Um, I'll take back what I said earlier. They tried, so it was mainly for, well, it was for men, it was a men's gay sauna, and they thought one night, they were like, here, on the Wednesday night, you know, not much happens, let's make it a women's thing night, so only women are allowed into the sauna, like lesbian or any women at all. Brilliant. No women showed up. Really? Because it was basically, this is almost like an experiment, basically, women are not as secure about their bodies as men are. So men, you know, men fucking just walk about, you know what I mean, if you're in a gym or something, you know, just sorry. but women obviously wouldn't be like that. They wouldn't just walk about, you know, fucking half naked or whatever. They'd be a bit more shy and, and think about it. So no one ever went to the women's night gay sauna. And there you go. There's a story of Northern Ireland, Andrew, for you. And, and the I'm gay sure. bars of Northern Ireland, mate. Fucking hell, we've got really into it. Really, really, that's that's a, that's a, I'm so, know, I, always, I always think like every city has a, like a gay community, which is always mm. pretty, like the gay community in Manchester, it's like, well, they're it's not just one street. I mean, people are gay all over wherever they live. You know what I mean? You don't have to be gay. Multiple you, streets of gay. <laughs> you don't have Manchester. to be gay on one. But like, there's a street in Manchester called Canal Street. Right. And that's like a full of bars and like, and then obviously in Soho in London. Oh, Bright- I've heard. Brighton as well as fucking, I've had great nights out in gay bars. I was in a gay bar about two weeks ago over in Manchester, three weeks ago in Manchester. Mm-hmm. It was a pound a drink. And, I, and I, with the cost of inflation at the moment, Aaron, 
I think it's a great place to go if you want to get pissed with the cost of petrol and you want to save a bit of money. <laughs> yeah. Monday night, gay bars, pound a drink, Canal yeah. Street, Manchester. Pound a drink, so you don't even need money for that. They just go in, just walk in, get like five Get pounded for one drink. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, yeah, I know, I was a slam. I'm, I'm not proud of that one, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, That's the, 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 yeah. So um, your arse must have been killing you. <laughs> the the like amount you, you, drank, the amount you gonna, drank, Sean. Sean, we're going to have to take that out, mate. We're going to have to take that bit out. Sorry, Sean. T, yeah, yeah pro- producers. You know what to take out there, yeah? I don't think we could say pounding. Pounding? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Oh, can Why you? couldn't you? Of course you can. All oh, right, okay. What's can we bad say about that? I don't that? know. Like, is that would that would that cause controversy? If you said getting pounded for a drink. No. Let's keep that one in. All right, keep, that keep that one in. in. This fucking guy. I'm running this podcast now, Andrew. If I say it's in, it's in. Do you know what? In. Do you know what? We just keep the whole, keep that whole, keep the whole thing in. Because it's raw. That's what the people like to see. Just yeah. the rawness. No, if you get cancelled for that, you fucking... Can I, can I, can I ask you a question, right? Mm. There's a couple of things I've started to dislike about living here. Sure. And I don't know. This is the thing that you've noticed. What is it with Northern Irish people shouting, Woo! At gigs. Mm. I mean... And, you know, like, just going, Woo! They're screaming. Yeah, it's just... I don't have it anywhere else other than Northern Ireland. Part of the... Do, is it like... Is it country Northern Irish people? No, or, it's, I think oh. it's actually more yo. It's yeah. more yo, yeah. yeah that's that's it, that you yeah. got, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. the fuck is that? What you were doing Stop was funny doing before, it. huh? Yeah, we, here's the thing. It's just a culture thing. You got to... You gotta, you, you, here's the thing. It's not our fault. It's your fault. You've got to start embracing that yo, okay? I need, so I have to do... I have to. You don't have to do it back is it, at a, them. is it a positive cheer? It's yeah. almost like a, I don't know what what would be would there be an equivalent in Manchester or England or London? like if you're if an audience would they be like well hey or I don't know you know what I mean no, do they, they would have... be like very very funny well done mm, funny. I think what happens is for people here especially if you make a joke that has a local reference in it say for example you're out doing a gig in Derry and I mention a bar up in Derry like flipping the brickwork or something like that they'll be like yo and because they it's a recognition as- they it? associate it with he's saying a place I know and I've been there and I work so I almost want to take ownership of what is yeah. about to be said here um, and it's just a, it's just a thing we do and you just have to I think sometimes it's good uh, like I, I've had it happen I'm trying to think of a, a joke like I always would make some jokes about West Belfast um, and there's always at least one West Belfast person in the audience that'll go yeah Yo, you know what I mean um, and you then start coming up with little comebacks and little quips to hit them back with when they do that I think that becomes then a part of the act and yeah, the routine I have that as well so yeah. you gotta find almost because I, I think it usually not, like for me anyway it always happens around the same sort of material it never sometimes it does just come out of nowhere to be fair but yeah I think you just gotta you gotta roll as best well, you can like, we're, we're terrible people Andrew that's you're what not I'm terrible, that's you're right but the thing is I have a thing every time when I like I was in Dublin gigging last week in Dublin mm. and I said I walk on and obviously you can tell I've a southern Irish accent but mm. you might not actually say that I was from Cork mm. because I've it's a bit diluted. Yes. Because I'm, I've lived abroad. Yeah, When I say yeah, yeah. abroad, you know, I've lived in England. Yeah. Anyway, but the more I'm back in Ireland now, the more I can feel it. And I'm more I'm more Come around back. Southern so Dublin people and Cork people because I'm here a lot more. I can feel it. Mm. All right. It's coming back. Yeah, yeah, trying, yeah, yeah. Trying. But whenever I'm on stage in England, or especially well, in England, but in Dublin last week, I walked on stage and was like, hello, everyone. It's great to be here in Dublin. How are you all getting on? I just went, so it's good to be here. So, my, so I'm, I'm from Cork. And people just cheer. Mm. And I know automatically have a comeback for when people cheer with Cork. When, so right. if they cheer, I just go, I don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't engage with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I have? And it, that gets another laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, please, I don't care if you, <laughs> if you, if you just... <laughs> Just because you're from Cork yeah. and I'm from Cork, we were, were if Cork is so good for you, why aren't you there now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Good. Like you know, like yeah, yeah. you know, like all that kind of stuff, yeah, right? That's nice. And uh, I just find that like pe- the, the shouting, the cheering, like it, don't get me wrong, it's lovely mm. and the people are excited and they want to yes. be there. But also it's a bit like, you're fucking up me time. I think <laughs> yes, what happens is here particularly is some gigs not all gigs it just depends on the mood of the evening and stuff like that it could be at any gig really it could be at a Lavery's or it could be at a Pugs or, or anything yeah. like that in Belfast or wherever but you'll get there'll just be a certain crowd in some nights where they just they just are rowdy just in terms of like they want to make noise but they make it at the wrong places oh, you know what I mean they don't worse. make it at like the punchlines they make it at like the, the flipping in the middle of the setup and you're like you're ruining everything I'm setting up here type way and just it happens from time to time I yeah. think you just gotta sort of roll with it and just uh, there was one gig I did recently in North Belfast as Ben Madigan's was the name of the bar or whatever and it was just chaos it was just chaos I, I just I didn't finish a single bit because I would start a bit 
and they would hear anything. You know, if I would say, oh, I've got one of these new Fitbits. She has a Fitbit! And you're like, twenty nine ninety nine, fucking rip you're, off! You're like, what is that contributing to anything yeah. here? Like, no one in the bar cares or whatever. And so you would just have to stop and then deal with them, then get into your next bit, which isn't a natural segue. And then they would go on again and be like, you're just, at, at certain points, you're just fighting. It's better just to walk off stage and go, I, I've, I've lost, I, I, I just can't, I can't I'm control good. this. Yeah, 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 it's just, it's too, it's too crazy. But what? for the most part, gigs here are lovely. Oh, uh, they are, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your, because you're, you're from the Falls originally. From the Falls originally, live up in uh, Glen Road area now, so I okay. do, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, me and Sean uh, have Sean. a flat together. Producer Sean, you don't live together, do you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> fuck it, I don't know how you live Live together. with a McDonald, you fucking <laughs> man, fuck's sake. So producer Sean is the brother of comedian Paddy McDonald, okay, so oh. it's a family mafia thing that's going on here <laughs> yeah. in West Belfast. Yeah. So can I just ask you, obviously... You're in your, in your early thirties. What's your relationship with like the South? Oh well, I Be, obviously being you know from West Belfast, yeah, and the South and the Falls. Funny enough, the way my mum raised me was not even to acknowledge that there is a South, and but it also wasn't to acknowledge that like the North either. It was just like, but it also it's not trying to be like, oh, there's a whole United Ireland thing, or the Ireland's one, blah blah blah. It wasn't even that. She just didn't give a bollocks about politics and right. political. So she just didn't give a fuck, and she didn't want me to give a fuck either. And rightly so, because I think sometimes we get so bogged down in that bullshit yeah. that it's like just enjoy living your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the but. So I didn't even know that the South and the North were separate. I was like 18, which is fucking so naive. Like, I was such a naive little kid. Look. Um, but then when I started to discover the South and, and all that, I was like, you know, I enjoy it. I, I like it. I'm a big fan. You know what I mean? It's it's the same, but different in many ways, you know. And Did you go down much? Uh, the old time I used to. So I would always make a thing of, pre-COVID anyway, of trying to get down to do like an open spot in in Dublin somewhere down south somewhere at least like three four times a year just to try get integrated with that scene a little bit and also because I think it's good for a material point of view when you've been doing the same gigs up north for a while you got to take the material elsewhere and travel it and go what bits here or 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 traveling work, yeah. better and what you know because you get a, a better and you also just get a fresh set of ears on the material that you have been doing to go you know what way does this play here and and, and that sort of thing so i would love to do that and i would like to get start getting back into that like i did like the crunch and wheelins and Great all those gigs, sort yeah. of play. Yeah, yeah all good gigs um but yeah so i enjoy it and then i remember you were saying earlier about the everyman down in cork yeah. i've been to cork once and it was because my friend was doing a musical in the Everyman from university. I was like 21 at the time. And he was doing a musical called Spring Awakening, which is quite a serious show. And he was like, come down and see it. You know, you can stay in my house and, you know, uh, you can just drive down. Blah, blah. And I was like, 21, 22 at the time. You have no responsibilities. You have nothing else to do. If I was to do that now, I'd be like, here's my day rate because I'm not making, I'm not <laughs> making. the price of petrol. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the whole thing. So I did the whole journey, get down there, find the Everyman park, like in a wee car park, like flipping a yeah. mile away or something, then had to walk like to it. Walked to the Everyman, I'm like half an hour early for the show. I see like just two or three like buildings up from the Everyman. There is a, like a little arcade or something, like a little flipping... Coliseum. Maybe, yeah. There's like a wee arcade, we wee... Uh, it's on the corner. Yes, yes. And there's like games Bowling and alley and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I seen that and went, fuck, I have a half hour to kill here. I've like... Play I've, snooker and pool and I've all some, that. I have some euro change from the toll in my pocket. I was like, fuck <laughs> it, I might as well. Now here, here's ridiculous luck. I... I go into the place and there's one of those claw machines you know where the teddy oh, bears yeah, the or whatever bears, yeah. and it's a big it's one of those ones where like it's a big one not just like you know the wee tiny ones and I thought fuck it I'll play this and whatever I'll just just for the crack play it on the first go I end up winning this big fucking Garfield teddy bear like that stupid big orange <laughs> thing and the issue is is my car is a mile away by the time I walk <laughs> and leave it back by the time I walk and leave it back I, I'm gonna miss the show <laughs> And, there, and there's also there's no there's no kids around. You look like you're there's like a special like you're some sort of make a witch foundation. Or something. No, but I I am like my friend is backstage, so I couldn't text him, give him the heads up, being like, mate, if you look out for the audience and see and see me, so. So I'm in the, the middle of the theatre. Oh, God. I just like, see you there with a teddy bear in the middle. But it wasn't just a little. It was on my lap. And I had, I, I, had, I had to watch the full fucking show. Just like this. And he, oh, he, God. he, you could 
eyes. I can see his eyes. He's like in the middle of his first song, and he's like, "What the, the fuck? fuck?" The whole cast. I was like, "Guys, I'm walking but- over to Teddy Bear, kind of point, kind of point a hiding can please in a fucking Garfield Teddy Bear. Like, it, this this kid's on some sort of like." I swear to God, it was half the size of you. It was so obnoxiously big, this Teddy Bear, and the legs and stuff dangled everywhere. It was just like I had to sit on, on my lap and like. <laughs> I had, I had a bag one of those fun size bag of Maltesers just like <laughs> drinking them in because I couldn't get another hand it's fucking wild what, where, where is the teddy bear now it's in my mum's attic <laughs> <I swear laughs> to God, you so actually brought it back walking back to the car in pitch dark walking back to the car in Cork we, on the north side of Cork with a fucking teddy bear like carrying a teddy we, bear in a northern Irish red car I had to meet him at the bar afterwards for drinks and stuff and I'm just standing there <laughs> fucking, but like I could like but because I was 22 at the time you don't just think when you're 22 <laughs> just fucking leave it in the arcade which was is what I would do now at 22 I was like I can't, I can't waste that there's kids in Africa that would love that that's what I was thinking 22 oh that's brilliant man <sighs> yeah. do you like Cork? That's, I did. that's your first memory of Cork. That's my only memory of Cork. It's the only time I've ever been, been down. down once. That's the only time I've ever been down. But I have to say, because it's fucking 18 hours away or something like that. It's four hours, hours, 15. Ah, fuck, it feels 18. Um, but I uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I liked it. It was really, really nice looking and stuff from what I can remember. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'd go again for sure. Yeah, I was in... Uh, fuck, that's so funny. I was in um, I was in Dublin at the weekend. And uh, the, thing, the thing is, like, I love going to Dublin. But I hate hanging around in Dublin. What do you mean? Like, so if I've got a gig, uh, I love going into the gig. Yes, going in, say gigs at eight o'clock, arrive whatever quarter past seven, park up in the venue, half an hour for chat to the acts, great, boom, do the gig, finish the gig, car, get out straight away. But if we go on a Friday and you do Friday night and Saturday night, you've got that Saturday to kill. Mm. Oh man, it does my nothing. Like right. and the thing about it is, I love Dublin. Oh yeah, but I just does. Like, I'll give you an example, right? I was down there last week and uh, I, I was meeting a couple of people about something and uh, I, t- I had an hour to kill, so I went for a coffee mm. and I had the fucking laddie daz. There was a rugby match on near me, a, a school's Leinster Senior Cup rugby game on. And I was sitting in, in, the, in, a, in a cafe and I was, you know, doing some emails and I was listening to the conversation next door and I swear to God, like, it was just annoying, about, yeah. like, just being outside of reality like mm. there's one guy who's going you know I'm just doing I'm doing a kite a kite surfing course at the moment up in Hoche Hoche is like a little seaside fucking town I think and I, I he goes like and I had to, I had to get the dart the dart is like the overgrown yes. train system right and uh, the people next to me were like you have to get the dart oh and I was like oh fucking hell they're, they're one of these now right and then he tells me that his mum had fucking started driving him to Hoche because he didn't want to get the dart which is a public transport system <laughs> And he was like, you know, I have to get out of bed at half seven every morning. You know, I'm used to it now. I'm like, fucking, people are getting out of bed at six, six thirty to go to work and commute for an hour and all this kind of stuff, right? And I just sat there, genuinely, was typing an email, fucking furious. It just angered you so much. And like, it just don't, you know, but it's just, it's just like this whole sort of like, and I know maybe I'm being a bit of a snob here or whatever, like, but I'm not, I'm being a bit unfair. But you sit there and you're like. People can't buy houses. People There's a war houses. happening There's a in Ukraine. War There's a guy there yeah, yeah. upset that he's to get public transport to a kite surfing fucking course. And I was just saying to myself, fucking Dublin, man. No, I'm sure there's wankers like that in Cork. And there's people oh, there's there people here. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But you just sit there and you're like, this is exactly what drives me insane about this city. He's like, yeah, I'm from Leinster. I still love rugby. <laughs> yeah, life is amazing. But Dublin is such a good place. And it is. Five percent of people are amazing. But the problem is you only hear like... The about two percent, five percent dickheads, don't you? Yeah, and look, Belfast is the same too, or, or Northern Ireland in general. You do have like that percentage of people that are just total fucking knob ends. But like. do you know, do you know what I, I don't know about you now, Aaron? But up here, like when you say about people, are, I had an incident in a uh, Madden's pub. What you know, Madden's, Madden's pub. You have to buzz to get in. Madden's here. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what one it is. You buzz in. Madden's. In city centre. Yes. Like yeah. Oh yes, yes. So I, you buzz in. I'm in, and I was in. With, I, was, I was with Darren, mm. and uh, went in for went in for a couple of. Ah, pints. That's your first mistake. Great. I <laughs> went in for a couple of pints, right? And I went to the toilet, and I'm going to the toilet anyway. And this guy comes in. He starts talking to me, and you know as you do, blokes do in toilets. I'm sure women do that as well. Yeah, wank. And uh, he comes in, and he's like, "Oh, you enjoying yourself?" And I went, "Yeah, I'm having a good time." Yeah. And he went, "Where are you from? Are you from the mm. free state?" Uh, and I just went. Uh, I'm from Cork I just went like I'm from Cork 
I didn't know what to say to the free state. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was, I was from Cork, right? Yeah. And then uh, and then he looked at me and he goes, what are you doing up here? And I just went, oh, I said, I'm living up here. Like, I'm living up here. I've been up here now, I said, you know, for last, you know, year and a half, whatever. I said, yeah, it's good, man. I really like it up here in Northern Ireland. And he went, it's not Northern Ireland. It's the North of Ireland. That was my dad. And I just went, oh, fuck. I've mm. got the phrasing wrong here now again. Uh, yeah. And then, and then, and I, and I just looked at him and went, well, it's not the Free State. It's Cork. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I was like, like, what the? So the two of us, is like a standoff as we're both doing our zips up at the same time. Thinking he'd get my, my little humour bit of like. And I was yeah. like, going, but I get this thing, this, people have this thing where it's like, oh, I'm in Northern Ireland. People are like, no, it's the North of Ireland. Then it's the South of Ireland. Then it's the Republic yeah. of Ireland. Then it's the Free State. Then it's Ireland. Then it's all of Ireland. Then it's the All-Ireland Island. That's I was why. like, what the fuck? What, how do I get it right or wrong? That's why I just call it whatever, because who gives a fuck at the end I don't of give a fuck either, Like there was, just... yeah, there was a big, whenever local boxers from here, you know, like Frampton and McCollum and stuff yeah. like that, there's always a big debate. Oh, oh, he's from the UK or he's from, you know what I mean? And, that and classic, like, if he wins, he's UK. If he loses, he's Irish. He's that, but and then you've got box boxers like McConlon who are, are just taking a stand, going, "No, I'm Irish fuckers." You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but here's the thing: I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think if you want to claim whatever, fine. It's fucking. I'd love to have two nationalities. I, well, people ask because sometimes I get the question too. Just rarely, like if you meet friends from England or something, they're like, "So are you Irish? Or are you Northern Irish? What ways it work?" Blah blah. blah. I feel I'm, I'm both. I, I don't fucking like if you want to call me Northern Irish. I, I can go with that, no problem. If you want to call me Irish, I'm happy. I've got an Irish passport. I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? If you want to say I'm from the UK, I'm happy to be a part of whatever. Because at the end of the day, I'm still going to wake up tomorrow and eat a fucking bowl of cornflakes and none of that is going to have any relevance to anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so just, I, I think... Just I think people, people create like... But it used to be worse like 10 years ago. So like you're saying about going into the bar and stuff, like when we would do gigs like 10, 12 years ago or whatever, you know, some boys would probably hang around the gigs and be like, you know... If, you, if they didn't like the look of you or whatever and be like and try talk to you after and try to take you down a peg or two like I remember in that being in the Hatfield one time and uh guy's like so what's your name and, and that's usually a way of being like how can I figure out where you're from if your name is Tom or Ian yeah or your name is Podrick or Seamus like, yeah yeah, yeah. Difference, isn't it? I remember just being like oh it's Arn he goes Arn what and that's when you know they're just fishing you're like Arn Butler they're like where are you from Belfast what part of Belfast I'll well, just around the sort of city you know the west side of Sarah and you're just like they're just constantly trying to drag something out of it and then eventually they'll just go be a Catholic and that's <laughs> they, they have to like eventually just get to the bottom just of it look like, at them and go what's that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what is that what is and that I'm like no I'm an atheist and they're just like oh what 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 a Catholic atheist and you're just like fuck I'm actually just... Sikh okay I'm yeah yeah, Sikh, yeah, right? yeah yeah okay. I'm Hindu I'm actually Maori okay. I'm Southern <laughs> I'm actually from Ecuador yeah. okay just leave me alone yeah, yeah yeah I identify as Cuban if you wanna <laughs> get into and on a Friday it. I identify as a cappuccino <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so whatever we want to do but yeah it's fucked up but look we are, I think we are making progress and we are getting better. I think in generations to come, that'll eventually just we filter. It needs 100%. time, doesn't it, though? It, it, that's all, and that's all it is. It just needs years to pass. As every generation comes on, it becomes less and less extreme. And eventually, the whole thing will just be... I mean, we'll all die eventually anyway in the nuclear holocaust of some kind. But it is what it is. But we've got our... I've got my first... Like, I'm not... Like, I tell you this so I... I'm not a big political guy, right? But we've got our yes. first election, my first ever experience of an election in Northern Ireland because I've seen the fucking posters are up in the walls now. Vote number one, right? And all this I've never of. even voted, I don't think. Yeah. But I vote. I'm the kind of guy that votes for the you know the independents to get like hmm. 37 votes. That's you. And their 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 policy is changing bin day from Monday <laughs> to Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. That's if that's the hill they're willing to die on. Uh, yeah. They're getting my vote. <laughs> <laughs> but I was lo- I googled it last night actually because all the, a lot of the posters went up because I think they're allowed to do it six weeks before an election or something some sort of rule you, your posters ah but they put up. them up way before and then they uh, keep them up for way after yeah. too no one person running for election is good looking oh really I haven't even Have seen you, the I've candidates I've not seen one good looking person yet that's a shame because I really base my votes on that <laughs> no but you ever look at it look at the God these are where's all the good looking everyone looks the fucking same here like that'd be a good sort of video content to do let's let's rank. Let's, in order let's create of a system. attraction who's best the worst who's, who's, who's best, be, best male like female. if you've got if you're the best looking person running you've probably got the shittest policies yeah and if you've if you're not the you don't least need best to have, looking person yeah. you probably have the best policies yeah I agree if you're if you're better looking you definitely don't need to, to have to be as serious about it you yeah. know what I mean you can definitely just ride the wave of, of the looks and that's yeah. that's the way society should be I believe you know the better, <laughs> the better looking people should always just I be looked, at the top I looked at uh, my area of who's like, who wins in my area 
And I'm just got to feel that Sinn Féin will not be calling to my door. Uh, <laughs> because they keep finishing nope. like seventh or eighth in the last couple Your of years. Your area will be DUP, not a problem, UUP. I believe. Oh, is it UUP? UUP, DUP and Alliance. Mm. Oh, you'll, uh, even Alliance, I would say, is a, a stretch for your area. Is so, it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, like, my area is the same, but, like, my area will predominantly be Sinn Féin for... Ever. Forever. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, with, a with a wee bit of people before With Trump, a wee bit yeah. of people before he, He's right, just a wee, wee salt, so, eh? You know, like, <laughs> wee, wee Do you want some sprinkles on you your ice cream? Before, right? There's your people before <laughs> profit on your ice cream. To be cream. fair, Shul, you make a good point, though. You're right, I think you, you could actually, in years to come, they might... They might have some momentum and they might make some changes, yeah. But again... People before just... profit are down south as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, they, they have a, I think they have a couple of seats. They probably have like one or two seats. They pop up every so often in the Irish Doyle arguing over this fucking, you know, the banks or something like that. Like, they always come on and say like, mm. you know, you know the way like every country's fucked up? Yes. Like, people say like, what I find about politicians is that they always tell you, we're going to fix the housing crisis. You can't. Mm. Like you just because if it was if you could the people would have just done it yeah like and I think I think it's very hard to get anything done in politics and also yeah I just I mean I mean they just fucking it drives me absolutely insane to 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 see certain people running it well we want to do this and we want that I'm looking good but you're not going to be able to do it yeah and then yeah that's gonna if that was so easy to get votes just to fix housing then the people in power would just do it. Yeah, and I also, can't. there's also this perception when, like, politicians and MPs and stuff, they play, like, a caricature of themselves, who they really, like, you don't see who they really are, essentially. You know, they put on this sort of front of, you know, I stand for this, and they talk in a weird way, and you're oh, just yeah. like, just be you. Why Why have you got to talk in a weird, you know what I mean? Why have you got to put on this persona of I'm an upright, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's all good to be a good person and stuff, but don't, like push it so hard and it's just like it just comes across so false I feel like many especially the probably more so talking about like the English UK politicians whenever you see them do that yeah. question time bullshit and stuff you're like well the right honourable gentleman you're like fucking why who talks I got anymore yeah. we're in 2022 like whoever goes the right honourable gentleman it's a bunch of bollocks either way it's crazy isn't Fuck it? it it's good to be here it's good to be, <laughs> it's good to be alive and have a job isn't it Aaron self-employed baby self-employed mate fucking living the Tax dream return coming uh, statement on account 31st of July yeah, that's right. They're not getting a fucking penny. <laughs> They're not getting a fucking penny off me. Yeah, you'll get. They've taken enough off. They've taken my self esteem and my <laughs> ambitions. <laughs> not taking a penny off me. I will have to send a lot of money to them because I just. I, do you I have, have to. Your books? What do you mean, like, uh, bur- like, bur- no, no, oh, no. you mean uh, the time? This, tamper- this bit isn't recording, does it? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> keep, keep it recording because I do. Yeah, I do. Come after us. I do. HRMC, come yeah, fucking after check, us. Well, more yeah, you want to fight? We fight every man in the street for you. No, he will. Not uh, getting a penny off. Yeah, us. you won't. Uh, more, you fuck, where have you? That's right. More him, more him than me. But yeah, I'm with Andrew on this. <laughs> yeah, the, I, um, come here, did you watch watch thing, Will Smith? I laughed so much, man. Fucking as soon as fuck he hit Chris Rock, Will Smith, I just fucking loser. As soon as he hit Chris Rock, I just went, "Oh my god, his tour's gonna sell out so fast." <laughs> I I tell you what, I am genuinely salivating at the the just the, even the idea of what Chris Rock can say or like material he will do on this. You know what I mean? Just the thought of what oh, he is gonna, gonna make. It's going to be like... It's going to be the best. Special he'll ever do. Like, yeah. He'll do an hour on it. Yeah, he literally could just do an hour called Will Smith Slap Me. But I, you look at fucking Will Smith. That whole family are fucking deluded, right? Imagine, put yourself, imagine you had a hundred million pound. So someone comes up to you and goes, right, you baldy cunt. What, what way do you react? Of a hundred million pounds. Exactly. I could buy exactly. a head and swap my head and have full a head of hair. Exactly. If I but I but Exactly. No. I'm probably upset and a lot of people here because there's people probably going, Alopecia, you know, blah blah blah, met you shouldn't have brought it up. La 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 la. Fair enough, right? That's a valid point to make. However, you know, you also shouldn't slap someone for saying something along those lines either. You know what I mean? I just think it's fucking I think, crazy. like, from what I, when I saw it, like, look, I get it, right? He made a joke. Now, whether you think the joke is... a shit joke yeah, as well, which is annoying. Yeah, but you think the joke annoying. is shit, bad, or the other is, is an indifferent thing. And if you've got a problem with it, he, Will Smith obviously didn't know he was going to win the Oscar until afterwards, but he could have came up and, like, he could have, like, used his words against Chris Rock's words and dealt with it that way. I remember, like, seeing Ricky Gervais hold the Golden Globes oh. and he comes out and, I mean, he's doing Weinstein saying, yes. you guys enabled Weinstein. He's out there, he's saying, like, saying stuff about Leonardo DiCaprio dating women who've aged too much over the process. Yeah. Like, he is, like, Mel, the shit about Mel Gibson he does. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I mean, 
if ever you someone know, deserved punch, yeah, deserved punch. Because, but yeah, he's hosted it four or five times. Have you seen the videos you know? that have started coming out about? Uh, so people have started clipping old videos of Will Smith and stuff like that. One was shown to me today, and uh, it's Will Smith on the Arsenio Hall show from like the early nineties. And there's a bald guy in the audience, and he makes fun of him for being bald. And then he says, uh, "I was only joking." Uh, it's, you can't take a joke about being bald. Literally, that's what he says. So he can say that then. Yeah. But then when it's made about his wife, say, oh, you can't take a joke. And then the other thing is, is that then she has a video of her, you know, from last year or whatever going, I know I'm bald, but I don't care what anyone says about it. I love it. You can say whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. And then, well, is it one or the other? Like, can people say stuff about it? Or are you going to get sensitive yeah. if someone says stuff about it? Don't preach one thing. And then when it actually comes to reality, you get a hug. And then he laughed at the joke as well at first, which is He laughed and then he looked at his wife. Then he wasn't happy with his wife. Yeah. wasn't like She kind of rolled her eyes or something. Yeah. And then he gets up and walks forward. But I, I genuinely thought like, he was going to go up and hug him. He, so did he, I think. Because he was like, hey, Chris man, Rock was laughing. You're the best. You know, like, you know, you know. I tell you what, guy I, on guy, kind of like you're the best Ed, post ever. You're making me laugh. Yeah, kind of thing. or it looked like he was gonna do. You know that thing they do where they get you in a headlock and go, "I see yeah. you." You know, it's something like I think Chris Rock probably thought that because Chris Rock was smiling the whole time with his hands behind his back, like, "Oh, here he comes." I you know, Chris Rock was so professional though afterwards. The like. way here's what the beauty of it is, and I think this is why Chris probably comes out on top on this for the most part is whenever he slapped him, he didn't like hold his face, he didn't like touch it. He just stood there and was like. Makes you know. premiership footballers look embarrassed. <laughs> oh, yeah, they would hit the door. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh no! Fucking he just yeah. stood there and he went, and the next award. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. And you could tell as well, he probably had some verbal... Fight. He probably could have cut him down, like, even more. Oh. But he just was like, I'll save it. I'll no, save I think it. there was a line, wasn't it? Don't, doesn't Will Smith and his wife have, like, an open marriage? So the whole thing Something has like been that. boiling over for, like, two... Because I don't really look into the whole celebrity sco- gossip scandal thing. But from what I know is that, yeah, there was... She basically slept with a friend of her son's who was, like, 24, Jesus. 25 really? or something like that. Yeah, really wow. young guy. And uh, she basically talked about it on an open podcast with In Front of Will. And that was the whole fucking thing about... But wasn't the son's friend... Is his name August? think so maybe yeah so but didn't will didn't chris rock i might be a little bit wrong here but didn't chris rock say to him god will smith you, this is how angry you are in march can you imagine how angry you are in august oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> or something like that or i can't I, i'm getting maybe i'm getting a bit confused but that was like a little dig at the wife some sleeping with someone else like anyway look but yeah. i i watched it and i just sat back and i just went to myself no i i don't have twitter or anything like that but i was just like there is going to be a fucking meltdown in the world today because of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I, I, I just say to myself, what's going to happen now is, guy does joke, mm. guy gets pissed off, guy does a slap. Yeah. Now it's, we need to talk about men on men violence and how kangaroos are the real victims. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's always... It's going yeah. go, to branch off into... So can we not just have it for what it was? It was a guy pissed off that should yeah. have done something and it happens. Mm. But do you know what? Chris Rock hasn't opened his mouth yet. No, which is interesting actually. For He's going to let Will Smith just deal with the heat. And Will Smith has came out and made a statement today and, and stuff and said the whole fucking... It's basically like a PR person wrote it, like which they probably did. And that's the whole my action. But every blah, blah, blah. single talk show host in America is like, hey, Chris, you available this week? You want to oh. pop on? Oh. You, you want to... Joe Rogan's like, hey, Chris, come oh. on, come on. That's what... Everyone wants him that, if, Oh, fuck it. I would love you it if he went on Rogan. Like, But I think Chris will probably just hang back just for... A good Keep wife. your mouth shut. Just, just, and just let it play out. Because that's, to be fair, that's where he'll get the best material from, and that's where he, he'll start to conjugate or come up with. Yeah, you know, this is what I'll do, or this will be my reply, or whatever. Um, but he did decide not to press charges, which is also an interesting thing too. The uh, the which I think is it makes him look like the bigger man as well. Yeah, if he was to press charges, you'd be like. Jeez, man, how needy are you? Like, I mean, mm. why, when you go, what's, going, what's going to happen? Like, yeah, yeah, just get yeah. over it, you know? But fucking people, I, celebrities are fucking nuts. Like, fucking... Do you know what? I, more I, money I, than I, sense. I've met a couple of famous people. You know, mm. we, we all have probably yeah. met a couple of famous people, especially in our industry. You know, yeah. people come to gigs and, and stuff like that. And um, some of them are so far up their own hole. It's ridiculous. And you think like, what? You, you're the part in a movie. Brilliant. Great. Like, I don't really care if you've got 100,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. Like, and you're going around acting like you're some sort of fucking, oh, I can't sit here, the seat is too wet, or the the table is not round enough for mm-hmm. me. You know, like prima donnas. The, I um, just hate it, man. 
Yeah, but then again, if I had that level of money, I'd probably be worse. I'd, I'd probably, Would you? Do you think I'd, if you I'd had a hundred million, you'd be an absolute? Oh, I'd be a bell end. Yeah, Would yeah, you? yeah. I'd fucking treat Sean What's and the, shit. No, <laughs> <He's> fucking, <laughs> <he's> like, <laughs> I treat him like that anyway. <laughs> Gee, yeah, card yeah, break. Yeah. Tell, no, I don't, don't know. Like, it's. I mean, what would you thing. do? What was the what was the first thing you'd do with a hundred million? Well, you immediately thing? sort your family and friends out. I think. Do you? Well, I would. I don't okay. know. Well, what would you do? I'd let them know I have it. I'd, <laughs> block, I'd, let, I'd let them know I have it, and then just, just, just not answer the calls for a week. <laughs> just let them know. They're like, "Hey, Andrew, you know, we still have a mortgage." Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Re- "New phone, new number. Who this? New number. Who this?" <laughs> yeah, put them make them work for it. Oh, you like me now? <laughs> yeah, you like yeah, me? Yeah. Friends with me now? Yeah. Well, then, would, see, my attitude is, I would just give them it, just so they could all fuck up. And out of a hundred billion, what would you give them? A million each. Um, no, you give your mum and dad a bit more. You give mum and dad maybe five million. And then you give like close friends, close family, grannies and stuff like that. A million, a million, a little million tears in there. Eventually you probably give away about 15. That leaves you with 85. All right. And then from there, you do whatever the fuck you want. I'd, I'd buy a country. Right. What country? Liechtenstein or something. <laughs> I'd declare myself. You could life. buy that now to be fair. My li- lifelong king. <laughs> Yeah, Turn up. I'm gonna have my own army, <laughs> yeah. my own national dish. All right, Putin, fuck's sake. Yeah, the, you know. the, and then I'm gonna the, start sending emails to America, going, "What a fight!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, and just have like toy soldiers with Lego and like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, like this. I don't know what to do. Do you know what? If I had a million, hundred million, mm. I would sort out people. Obviously, I'm not, a, I'm not an animal. Yes, of course, I would sort out people. But I'd let them, I'd remind them every week that I sorted them. Remember, I sorted you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd hold Anytime it Anytime you could heads. buy me yeah. dinner. <laughs> tonight. Oh, you're getting an extension. Who paid for that? <laughs> Who paid for that? <laughs> Are your kids going to private school? Who paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that, the old West Belfast mentality. Remember, I sorted you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I need to <laughs> oh yeah. yeah I mean in West Belfast yeah, you can't owe people money because you're basically you're, you're in the mafia then essentially yeah. that's that is how it works I, yeah. I think what I would what else I would do is I would if I would say say luckily my I have a brother that's married and a sister that's married and they're both married to lovely people right but imagine one of them was married to someone we didn't like <laughs> So, say, for example, my sister was married to you, right? Oh, <laughs> no, no, look at no. just, just as an example, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. just as a, we like you very much, but just as an yeah. example. No, you don't mean my And I say, sister. right, I, I go to my sister and say, right, listen, you're married to this guy, and he's a prick, and I don't like the way he treats you, yeah. so I'm going to give you 10 million to leave him. Oh, that's a good one. But you have to leave him first, yeah. right? Before you. And get the divorce finalised, so he then is not entitled to a penny, and then the minute that divorce is finalised, I will hand you 10 minutes and then we just send them a picture of you with a cheque for 10 million and two fingers. That's what I do. I like that. But that's- I would pay off, say, say if my sister married somebody that we didn't like, I would say to her, if you want some of my 100 million, you have to leave him. That's good. I like that idea. And it's very Squid Game-esque. It's very like, you know, you're putting them in wee challenges would you, and all. Would you leave someone for 100 million? Oh, if I'd leave someone for fucking a tenner. <laughs> If you were married <laughs> and mind. you're reasonably happy, normal life, and you knew your life was going to be nice and set up, a nice house, one or two holidays a year, nice standard, you know, nice car, but, you know, you, you kind of, you still have to work. And I said, Aaron, there's a hundred million here. Mm. Leave her off. Yep. Let's go. Would you leave? I say, sweetheart. We had a good run. <laughs> and now it's time. I think there's more than one person for everyone. I think we've got to, you know, a style. Turn around to her and be like, I just feel I need time to really find out who I am. Yeah, yeah. Look, I've decided it's my time. The other, oh, yeah, 100%. I would. And just look, speak to my solicitor. I'm currently living in Dubai. <laughs> Fuck, I love Dubai. I wish. Have you been to Dubai? Yeah, yeah. I went there for the first time in yeah. November. What do you think of it? Like, bizarre. It's such a bizarre land because you can tell that this place basically used to be in India in yeah. terms of like, you know, poverty and the, the landscape and stuff. And essentially they've just found a boatload of oil yeah. and went, we're rich now, let's just build something there, something there, something there. It's so like, I want to say like man-made, manufactured. Like, it, it, the, the craziest part of Dubai in my mind is the man-made islands. Have you ever seen those? Yeah, but then the Atlantis. Oh yeah, yeah, and the palm and stuff yeah, like that. Younger, it's, yeah. it's literally like, when you watch those being made, they literally had enough money where they took a truck of sand and just started pouring it into the wa- into the ocean to make an island. That is the most fucking yeah. surreal, weird thing. And people live on it and people yeah. there's fucking a water park on it yeah. and there's hotels and you're yeah. like, how does this even, how is this a Who's thing? Who's sitting at home one night and going, 
Mm. Yeah. Sand and water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to do next yeah, week. Yeah, just insane. I, I've been to Dubai about four times. Right. As, as like a I'm holiday go, location or a gig gigs. thing? Gigs. I'm actually going again in, in December to do wow. 10 days. Wow. Get 10 days. Do gigs. you get the fly business? No, I don't. Oh, I did. I fl- oh, did you? Oh, oh, Andrew. Oh. Is, it, is it? Is it worth it? Oh, oh here, here's what's sh- fucking annoying about business. Once you fly in at once, oh. fr- your, any flight you have from there on in is fucking awful. That's why I need to stay in economy. Like, you because, should, I know. Because if I go up, I can't go down. That, that, and that is the issue. Like, I've fucking, yeah. I've been up and coming down is, is not done first fun. class? Never first. I've walked it through first class as I'm fucking going to business. <laughs> um, th- there is... It's not too different, but there is just another level. Like, like, and, and for example, in first class, they give you a fucking well in business class as well. They give you your own plane. <laughs> <laughs> they give you a well in business. You get a, a menu. So another way, like if you're in economy, it's like chicken or vegetable. Ham and cheese toasty. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally like here's one of the two dishes: a vegetable one or a chicken one. Take it. In business, they're like, well, here's a menu that has five different options, and here's like the dessert menu, and here's a blah blah blah. You're in a restaurant. Yeah, but in first. They're literally like, what do you want? And we'll make it. And it's literally like steak, fucking, you name it. Like, you can pretty much get it in first. Same. Which is, because then it makes you think, like, they've literally dedicated a full kitchen on the plane to first. Yeah, and but, then economy just have, that's like, how they're making their money. They're, like, yeah. The, the money from economy seats are literally covering the cost of the staff and the actual flight and airspace yes. and petrol and diesel or whatever yes. oil or whatever they fucking put into it yeah. whatever these days <laughs> but then it's the money that they make in business class and first yeah. class is the is the thing because do you know like British Airways that fly domestically say from London to Belfast or London to Glasgow like they're lost lead, they're lost leading flights like mm. they're losing money oh yeah but they have to do it to keep the, uh, the, the rhythm going the, yeah, yeah but like I've never flown I've flown premium economy which is basically um, economy, you're still yeah. scum yes but you're going to be a scummer closer to the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're and also, there's a, you're going to get like, you're going to get a tiny little bit of leg room. You and get, yeah. somebody that's really attractive is going to come over and talk to you. Yeah, in premium economy, you get that. And you also get like a closer glimpse at business. So you get to see what you could have if you were more successful or a better person could be sitting in, but instead you're not that person. So you get a slightly, and do you know what annoys me about premium economy actually is that the seat goes back more, but it goes back just, just enough so that you're not comfortable. Like it goes like back here and you just want that extra, Extra that extra inch inch just to like get me flat and it doesn't give you, it's almost like they know how to design the seat perfectly to where you'll not be comfortable, but you'll also be like a, it's just, it's a, do you ever, do you ever ever get on a plane and you're sitting on a plane and uh, your plane's taking off for safety, whatever. And you're like going, ladies and gentlemen, we have a passenger today that has a nut allergy. Mm -hmm. And you you go, right, who the fuck is it? (laughs) Like I'd you be do. walking up and down the bed and go, right, there's someone on here that's got a nut allergy yeah. and they don't they don't say, sorry, that's me. I walk around and go, I often walk up and down and I'm like, oh, which, who is it? Who is it? You do immediately start looking go, go, go. on. Who the fuck is the nut who allergy guy? Who is the nut guy? guy like, who is it? <laughs> or woman. Like, you know what I mean? But you're always just sitting there and you're like, oh, who is it? Yeah. Some, like, but there's somebody on there now that they're like, they know that announcement's about them and they're just sitting on the bed and goes, I'm the nut person. Yeah, and they're like, and, you, and they're just like, say nothing, say nothing, say nothing. Just, I, I, getting back to Dubai. Dubai. I was in Dubai, been a few times, and every time I go, I the first day buzzing, second day buzzing, bored, then bored. Oh yeah, five days it bores me. I've seen it, guys. Really? Not that I've, I, like, I've never been up to Burj Khalifa. Or, oh, I did. I didn't even go to the water park. I did. Have you ever been to the Dubai Mall? Yes. It's basically every like shoes mm. have their own mall. Yes. In the mall. The mall. The mall is like a mall, but then subdivided into like many yeah. malls because it's so big. It's it's. It's it's too. It's, you have it's like re- the tech side and the yeah. fucking luxury clothes. Like, I want to buy shoes. Yeah, that's a mile over there. Oh yeah, you have to walk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm walking over there, but I have no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You're barefooting it to the shoe shop. It's just fucking phenomenal, man. It is. It's 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 um the heat is something else too. Like depending on what time of year you go. I was lucky enough that it wasn't too bad, but the uh, the I have friends that live over there and stuff, and they would say like when it gets to like April to, to September time, yeah. they're like. We are indoors. Yeah, yeah. Because like, so it's just, and a shout out to Shane Todd. He, 
<laughs> there was one time he went to Dubai with his wife and uh, he got like real cheap flights and stuff, real cheap and like cheap accommodation stuff. He was like, I can't believe it's so fucking cheap. He's like, this is amazing. Blah, blah. Goes in like the height of July. Oh, 60 degrees. Oh, it? yeah, yeah. Goes in the height of July, lands, fucking landed in the evening, went to bed. It was like, gets up, goes, oh, we'll go to the beach, me and you. Gets, a, gets into the taxi, goes to the guy, uh, uh, to the beach and the guy's like, the beach? He's like, yeah, just we're going to go to the beach. He's like, all right. Gets out of the taxi into the beach. The beach is empty. Like, not a center on Because the fucking heat is just it's gone. Gets out of the taxi, realizes what a fuck up he's made. And then they spend the next week of their holiday in the mall. And in the fucking indoors everywhere. He's like, barely seen anything just in the hotel. And oh. It's too hot. Like, yeah, the best time is December, November, December, and January, I think. That is, yeah. So I was I'm going in December this year. Yeah, that is. That, that's definitely, I think, because yeah. uh, it's just a nice, nice, enjoyable temperature. Yeah. But the one thing I, I remember about like being in Dubai is it's like... When you, I, I, there's a hotel that we stay in, the comedian stay in, it's called a Moven Pick, and it's on Jumeirah Beach. It's a lovely hotel. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You check in, and you're like, you walk in, and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, I yeah. I cannot believe my shitty jokes has got me here. Like, right? <laughs> and anyway, you check in, you've got a ro- I've got a fucking robe on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got these white slippers, and I'm walking around. But every three hours, the hotel phone rings. Right. Right? So you have what's known as guest relations. Hmm. So there's somebody sitting at the guest relations desk and they ring up and they're like, hello, Mr. Ryan. I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking, have I done something like? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ryan, um, do you need anything? No, no. I'm grand. I'm grand. I'm grand. <laughs> anyway, three hours later, phone rings. Mr. Ryan, um, the evening is coming. Yeah, I know how time works. Yeah, I was crack, right? <laughs> do you want us to iron any of your clothes? I was like, you what? No, man, you're grand. I'll iron my own shirt. You know, uh, like, you know, like, following morning. Uh, one morning, uh, housekeeping, knock on the door, like say 11 o'clock right now. Bear in mind, we, you land at like 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. Cause you, we get it. We normally get a night flight from Heathrow and you kind of want to, don't want to sleep cause you don't want to waste a day. Yeah. So you tend to like potter up and then try and sleep before the gig. Mm-hmm. And then after the gig, you want to go fucking mental and get mm-hmm. points in you cause you're in fucking Dubai, right? Yeah. So the following morning, the housekeeping come in and uh, say 11 o'clock or something like that. I'm waking up dead bodies everywhere right I'm waking up right and they say do you want us to iron any of your clothes and I so I, straight away in my head I'm thinking like how much is that uh, the first thing I thought is like how much is it the Irish clothes, mentality right? yeah, nothing comes for how free how much here. is that like yeah, yeah. they're like no no it's free and I went are you serious so I handed over I swear to god now and I don't know why I did it I had, I had like a couple of shirts you know for the gigs and stuff like that and then I went there's three shirts I said would you do the socks as well <laughs> Socks for me, the fucking socks. Fucking but I was work. free, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, but when it's free, you're so like cork. iron the socks as well. There, iron the socks. So there. cork. Like, but it's just like it was free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the, yeah, the good fun. But there is there is a dark element of Dubai as well as, and that is, you know, they call themselves the expats. Yes. And I say, you're not an expat, you're just an Irish or British immigrant that's living in someone else. I hate that phrase, expat. I hate, yeah, I don't get it either. Because, you, because I think it implies that you're better than the local. Yeah. I don't like it. But I was in a restaurant one night in Dubai. It was like a Japanese restaurant. It was on like the 79th floor of a fucking 3,000 floor building or something. Of course it is. And me and the comics were there. And the table next to us said there was, say, uh, uh, say six people, two British and four Irish. And how do we know that? Because we could hear them. Mm-hmm. Right? So you could tell. But didn't the Irish, uh, an Irish woman, to the waiter. Really? Oh, wow. Did that. And my blood boiled. Boiling, like, to the point where it's like, you're Irish. Mm. You're supposed to have low self-esteem. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. why are you clicking? I used to be a waiter, like, yeah. you know, we've all done jobs like that, right? Like, yeah. why are you clicking your fingers? Like, like the entitlement really ups- pisses me off and I just, and I, I was with one of the comics and the comics said you're right and I go I'm just I'm really fucking agitated because <laughs> of what's going on over in that table and the way it was the way they were speaking to the waiter mm. and uh, I, I felt like saying you know what I'm going to say something like, when we because we were nearly finished like and they were like I think just like getting their mains or something like that because we were going to the show I go I'm going to say something like, I can't leave this I'm at an age where I say stuff now yeah and I said, I'm going to go over and say excuse me I just saw you click your fingers at the, wait- the, the waiter um, you're Irish are you yeah you wouldn't do that in Ireland, so why would you do it here? Yeah. But I didn't say it. You, did, you chickened out? I chickened out, yeah. But look, as you get older, you might start oh, to... If that happened tomorrow, 
Uh, you would do it now. Oh, after happened tomorrow. You'll see on Sky News the following week. An incident. <laughs> Comedian Andrew Ryan. Ryan has been arrested in Dubai and imprisoned <laughs> for, <laughs> for, for attacking a fellow Irish person for clicking weight fingers at a way. It, it, mm. like, that's how you treat a server, mm. as it say in America. I was a waiter for years. A barman, a waitress, a waiter, uh, people who work in all those service jobs. To me, is a very common phrase where people know that determines how I feel you you are as a person. I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? But isn't it one of the it's it just it shows the the flawed humanity of people where I Dan not that I get it to an extent of the clicking thing, but like, for example, if you have a certain amount of wealth, certain amount of money, oh, yeah. certain amount you eventually start behaving differently and you eventually, you know, you might be surrounded by people who are licking up your hole all day going, yes, Andrew, you're great, Andrew, you're great. You should click yeah. more, Andrew, Andrew. You know, you can just get Keep that waiter and slap him in the face. And then eventually you start to believe that and go, yeah, I can click my fingers. One of the best examples, John Mulaney, you, you know John, yeah, the comedian. comedian. He does a bit about uh, meeting Mick Jagger for the first time. Have you ever seen it? No? No, and I've seen it. He does a bit about meeting meet Mick Jagger. He says, Mick Jagger has been on stage for the last 50 years of his life, getting escorted around, treated like an absolute fucking king. Stadiums of people chanting how great he is. If you had that, you'd be a bit fucking weird too, you know what I mean? He says, like, he was just standing around Saturday Night Live, Mick Jagger's just standing there, and he just goes, Coke! And everyone was like, what? And then out of nowhere, someone just appeared with a tin of Coke <laughs> and just gave it to him. And he's like, he's like, that's what, he didn't even ask, can I have a Coke? Can, you know, is there a Coke? He just went, Coke! And like, someone just hands him a Coke. And, that, and, be, and like, you go, that's mad. And then you break it down and go, actually, it's I believable. I can get that, I can get that. But what I can't get is, Irish are... British or Scottish or wherever you're from, getting a job yeah. fucking tax free, working in Dubai, moving over for a bit of heat because you you don't like your life here. Uh, All of a sudden, then feel you're entitled. Yeah, just she, because you got a fucking you're you're you got a really good job and you're earning tax free money and you've got a little bit of a better lifestyle. Yes, Mick Jagger has a talent. True, that's been developed. So did that, that lady, work, maybe. No. <laughs> She's talent for being a fucking bitch. <laughs> hey, she may have been a great painter no, or something. because I was looking at him and I was listening to him and I was like, I know exactly the type of people Person they were. you are, yeah, And yeah, I was yeah. like, they're here because they're probably, I can't say they were teachers teaching English. Right. And you know, earning good money. And you know what? And I don't begrudge anybody going to like the Middle East to earn tax-free money because the cost of living here is a fucking disgrace. True. And there's massive housing. So if you can go over there, use your degree and get a couple of years out and have a lot of fun and meet people and stuff like that. But when you go to places like that, man, hmm. you cannot get above your station. Like. And it's tough to, it's annoying too because the people from those, like Dubai and stuff like that, and I've been to India and things too, the, the, when you're a visitor from there, or fucking, you're white essentially, they look at you and they're, they treat you with so much yeah. like they're like you are our guest like we will look after you for everything blah, blah blah and they will literally bend over backwards for you like so her clicking them is obviously her taking advantage of their hospitality because they are so like you know we will like the ironing thing you were saying like we'll yeah. iron your fucking clothes for you that's yeah. mad you know what yeah. I mean where else does that happen um, so yeah it's it's annoying because I think where you're coming from there is she's obviously taking advantage of, of that too like, yeah like he's obviously extent. like you know I'm in a hotel I've been offered a free service mm. and I've like taken advantage of that she's like demanding yeah. but you were nice about to him yeah obviously like, she's like excuse me here, yeah, here. Like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're not a like you're fucking slave like she's got too accustomed to the lifestyle you know Aaron thank you so much for coming on Cork in the North a really pleasure to, to be you here I'd love to be back again sometime. definitely get you again we'll get you back on once the podcast uh, gets successful <laughs> <laughs> after this one this is it this is the breaking point here ladies and gentlemen I just want to say a big thanks to everyone that downloads shares and, and subscribes to the uh, Cork in the North podcast it's absolutely flying I can't I, I, well, I'm going to be doing a post in a couple of weeks to show you all the download numbers but absolutely buzzing with the amount of people that are listening to it and really do appreciate it uh, check out Aaron and his comedy and stuff like that he's always performing in, in around the north and also four times a year he goes to the south mm. to do his open spots <laughs> uh, so make comedy sure crunch comedy crunch see you there four see, times, see there a, year. Four times <laughs> a year but uh, please do keep liking sharing and subscribing and also uh, you know uh, keep going to live comedy support the live events and arts and stuff like that I really appreciate it we'll see you again next week thanks very much everyone appreciate it thank you Aaron bye